My name is Ken Kazakoff. Today we're across from the Castlegar Airport at the Kootenai Dukabor Historical Village, and I have with us Pete Oglo. Pete's a renowned spoon carver from Castlegar, and uh, he's going to show us the traditional Dukabor art of spoon carving today. Ready to go, Pete? Yes, thank you. I'll start with first thing with cotton the cherry wood, and then we'll proceed further on that. Here's the procedure that Pete Oglo will use to carve a ladle. First, the wood is cut to the length of the ladle to be made. Then it is placed on a chopping block and split with a fro using a wooden mallet. The wooden mallet prevents distortion of the fro. A fro is used because it covers the full length of the wood. Then an axe is used to square off the wood. And a template is made out of cardboard and drawn on the flat side of the wood. A handmade coping saw is used to rough in the pattern.
It is placed in the vice flat side up and carved with a handmade half round chisel. A curved chisel is then used to bring it closer to the pattern. At this point, the ladle is completely immersed in sawdust and shavings. This keeps it from checking, and it is left there for a period of three months or so, so that the sap can evaporate. The ladle is removed from the sawdust, put in a vise, and finished with chisels, rasps, and scraped with a piece of glass to produce a smooth finish. In the early days, to preserve the ladle, it was boiled for half an hour in linseed oil. Nowadays, verithane is used to finish the ladle thus giving it a more lustrous finish. shave now. Okay, Pete, let's have a look at some of the tools you'll use in carving your spoons now. Where should we start? Well, we could start with the sob here. It's handmade and blade is very narrow. You could cut it straight or you could cut the round just like this spoon right around it. It, it looks pretty interesting. Is, is that hand carved too? Yes, th this is hand carved and this is the tightener. Instead of having the uh, threaded up here, which is it's made all out of wood and you could twist it, cut sideways, but this is to tighten up the blade. Oh. Did, did you carve this too? Well, my dad made this saw, and you, you, could, you could twist the blade sideways, so you could cut uh, around the spoon either way, or cut the straight. Okay. How about these other two big tools out front here? Well, that's wooden mallet, and this uh, tools up here is to split the logs, just like you see this one up here. Why is this so crude and rough looking? Well, for this purpose you need only weight and hard wood. This is made of uh, uh, hard wood. Okay. Let's go on to some of the tools on the table here now. Starting over here. Um, a hatchet. Well, this, the, this is the axe. And you, you work with the rough log as much as possible with the axe, then you turn to another tools. That, is that handmade too? 
No, but it's old fashioned axe. They don't sell anymore like this. Okay. And this here? That's wooden mallet which you uh, use on uh, carving the spoons with this rough first and then you start working by hand. Wooden, it's made because you don't split. With steel hammer you could split this, but with wooden one it don't split the handle on, on the carving tools. Okay. Um, this is a rough spoon here, I suppose, and um, a finished one. These, yeah. what, what are these here, Pete? This is the pattern, so when, when you make the rough spoon, I make the pattern out of it and just cut it rough around it. Okay. And this is different sizes. Let's look at the individual carving tools here. What What's the difference between some of these and uh, or why would you use one instead well, of another? With, with, with these tools, you carve with rough. It makes the rough carving out. You can't make the spoon, uh, finished spoon with this one. But with this knife, you could make it very spoon because you could cut it either way with, with this knife and you could work it back and forth and it makes very, very smooth spoon inside. Are those handmade also? Yes, this is all handmade, all handmade tools. What's this funny looking one on the end here? Well, these tools you could use again for working inside the spoon. This one you could use in a sharp corners. Okay. Is this some sort of... Uh, and the, the, lathe this, or? The, this is uh, factory made, but you, you work with this uh, to finish up rough handle like this. And then you could work a little bit around. So that's a hand plane? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the files you use? <laughs> yes, this rasps use them in the tough corners like up here. And this, you use it on a more play in sides. Okay, I see a few pieces of broken glass here. I'm wondering where would you oh, use in, those? In the olden days, there hasn't been any money to buy the sandpaper, or maybe there hasn't been any sandpaper when they were start making the spoons in Russia, so they used the broken glass to smooth the spoon. That seems to work quite well. Yes, yes. Where would you use this stone knife here? Oh, this this is uh, to sharp sharp the tools. It's rounded on one side, and you sharp these tools. You have to keep the tools very very sharp to uh, to obtain any kind of a proper finish. And you could sharp these tools with this one. How, lo how long have you had these tools, Pete? Well, th this tools, uh, my, my dad's, and when he passed away, I took all the tools and started making the spoons. How long have you been carving spoons? Oh, for about five years now. And these tools have to be very sharp. You could shave with it. <laughs> That's how you check to yeah. see how sharp they are? Yeah, if, if I could shave with it, then it's sharp. I could start work on a spoon. <laughs> That's great. Okay, back over at the spoon and ladle display. Pete, can you point out the difference between a spoon and a ladle for us, please? This, this is the spoon that you eat with it, and ladles are, you fill up the bowl with it. Is there any difference in the type of wood you use to make a spoon and a ladle? Uh, I, I usually make spoons and ladles from different kind of wood. Why? Just, just variety. For instance, this is the apple, and it's very hard. And this spoon is uh, birch, and you could see some coloring in it. When I cut the birch, I put it in the garden on the end of the block, and leave it for about uh, through the winter, and next spring I 
starts splitting and it draws the moisture and that's why you get the, this kind of color from the birch. That's interesting. A few of the, your other ladles here have interesting colors to them. How did you get the red color into that one? Well, this uh, are ornamental maple and it's got original red color in it, pure, pure red. That's that's yeah. not hand painted in. No, no, it's not hand painted. It's the original, original color in the wood itself, and leaves just like a maple, but it's very soft wood. Let's look at a few of these other ones here that are multicolored. How did this one get its coloring? Well, this is made from juniper tree, and it's original color. It's very beautiful. It's cedar family. It's very soft wood, but when you put nice finish and coat, and it's very uh, usable. What what type of finish do you use, Pete? Well, up here we I'm using the varnish or uh, artificial varnish or whatever. Ver Veritane. But in olden days, uh, they they've been using uh, flax. They grow the flax and uh, seeds. They make the oil of it, and uh, they boil the spoons in the oil, and that way it preserves them for life. Did they have the same type of shiny finish afterwards? No, not as shiny as this. Let's have a look at one of the bigger ones here. This huge one here must have been pretty hard to carve. Do you use the same techniques as for the little yes, spoons? Yes, same techniques, but uh, they have to dry, dry the... Uh, wood, when you cover with rough, you have to cover very, very, uh, very good and keep uh, keep it moisture or in the root cellar. Otherwise, it has the tendency of uh, cracking. Oh, yeah. Or splitting. <laughs> okay, we'll have a look at that in a few minutes, but let's, mm -hmm. let's look at some of the other spoons here that are half-carved. And Can you tell me what kind of wood they're carved out of? Well, all, all this uh, white and reddish wood, all, all this is uh, juniper. And it's been uh, in the sawdust uh, for quite a while. All the sap has disappeared from it. Now we would start finishing them. What What is this white wood here? This birch. It's same wood as this one, but it just uh, hasn't been uh, treated any other way. It's just pure as as you split the log. So birch and juniper. What What other types of wood do you use? Well, this this here is uh, cherry wood. And it's been in water. I split the logs and put it in water and left it there for over a year. And that's how you get the dark color of cherry wood. How, how does it go dark from the water? Well, from the bark of the cherry, it gets the uh, coloring and it penetrates us all the way through if you left it long enough in the, in the water. Would you see the grain like you see it here if you hadn't done the water trick on it? Well, if I don't had done water trick, it will be uh, probably just like this one here. So the grain wouldn't stand out quite as much? No, no. And it's not dark. A che cherry wood, it's a little bit, well, very similar like this one up here. Okay, let's have a look at your sawdust box here. And the, what, what do you use it for? Well, when I rough up the spoon like this, then I keep it in a sawdust, cover it up, and keep it so the sap will disappear from it. Otherwise, this is what you get with it. It's split if you take it out very soon. Thanks, Pete, for coming up to the village here and explaining it to all the people about how you carve spoons. It was a pleasure, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>